so slight different approach from me. I'm not going to give you a top five. I've wrapped up some tips and tricks about adding 3D workflows into a workflow. Um, but first, I just want to give you an update on where we are with 3D across the platform. So Josh has certainly pointed out that um, our world isn't flat and our GIS shouldn't be either. So 3D is a very powerful communication and collaboration tool, which I'm sure you've seen through all the different examples today. Our 3D across the platform initiatives have seen updates with regard to our desktop authoring tools, so City Engine and ArcGIS Pro, as well as cross-platform support for Web 3D through our Geo Information Model. So this is our scene services and our web scenes. I guess the bottom line is that 3D is becoming mainstream, it's here to stay, and we've seen a massive deployment of web scenes globally as well as in Australia. So this session is going to dive mainly into the 3D capabilities of our web GIS, not specifically City Engine, but if you do want to have a chat about that, by all means come and see me afterwards at, at Arc Lab. So in my first presentation I said that web maps are really important. In this one I say that web scenes are really important, because they are. Now within your portal we create our web scenes and they're made up of different web scene layers. We can set some different symbols um, on those layers within our web scene and we can also provide or configure some different settings within that container, so different viewpoints which we save as slides, so obviously different camera angles, as well as um, have a play around with the settings around the time of day. Now, those web scene layers are supported by elevation services, scene services, and our map or feature services. So the scene services are really, today, they're about our 3D objects, so publishing multi-patches that we can bring in and, and view in our web scenes. And once we have a web scene, we can obviously look at that in ArcGIS Pro, uh, just share and use it within the scene viewer. Um, if your device supports WebGL, you can look at it on a device. And for developers, the runtime SDK, as well as our JavaScript API, which has just been released, has support for 3D. Ah. So, straight into a demo, not to publishing workflows. So what you've, I've got on my screen is quite a, I'd say a polished scene. Um, it's got a lot of information in there. So if it is going to load through for me. Um, we have realistic trees, which are 3D objects. We've also got buildings, which have been rendered using um, pictometry data. Uh, we also have 2D information that's been draped, which represents um, utilities. So these are the types of information that you can bring into web scenes. Now, down the bottom, you see we've got a whole lot of different slides, which are those capturing and turning on and off layers at different viewpoints that you might want to guide your, the consumer of your web scene through to tell that story in 3D. Now, I'm not going to show you how to create this particular web scene, but we're going to start with a little bit more of a basic demonstration using one of our solution templates, which is called the local government scene. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you can jump onto to solutions.arcgis.com and as um, there's app templates, there's also different desktop tools. And for this one particularly, it's actually an ArcGIS Pro project which guides us through the process using tasks, which Rich has explained earlier, to actually create some simple 3D data from LAS files and 2D building footprints. So our end goal, which we will create, will be um, LOD1 buildings, so that's when we, you know, our buildings are represented as a shell, just extruded um, to its height, and we'll add in some trees, and we'll publish that, and we'll have a look how we build that scene in a portal. So, starting in Pro. When you have tasks, they'll appear to you over here in this project window. So we have three main tasks that, uh, tasks which obviously have subtasks. So the first is that we'll publish some elevation layers, then we'll publish our buildings, and then we'll publish some trees. So to start for our elevation, um, the first thing that this workflow does is create a LAS data set out of your LAS files. Second, we publish a digital terrain model and a digital surface model, which we do based on filtering out that LAS data set once we've created it. So I'm not actually going to 
go through the process because it might take a little bit um, too much time. But the product of that first tool is our LAS data set, which we can bring into Pro. And Josh talked a little bit about the LiDAR data earlier. So if you've got natural colour LiDAR, we can display this now in ArcGIS Pro. This one isn't, but it is classified. So we can do things um, quite simply by right clicking and having a play around with our filters. Um, if you want to go into a little bit more detail around those filters, we can go into properties and, and turn different classification layers on and off. So if you are familiar with Townsville, you'll notice we have um, the Holiday Inn here, which I think, I always think this is a nice, clear example of how that, uh, how LAS can capture those building heights. So once we have that LAS data set in, uh, the next step to creating our local government scene is to create our digital surface model and our digital elevation model. And what this is going to do is give us surfaces to extract data to apply to our 2D building footprints. Now, there is something else which we're going to use our digital elevation model for in this process. And if we zoom to Castle Hill, which again, if you've been to Townsville, is quite a prominent feature, um, it doesn't quite look like this. So within our web scenes today, our World Elevation Service, which comes from Esri Inc., it uses the SRTM one second DEM as its base data. So that's about the highest resolution data that comes through that World Elevation Service. So while it's a great data set, um, you will have some areas where you actually want to have higher resolution elevation data. So there's a couple of things that we can do. We can actually bring that elevation model that we create in and drape our imagery over that. So a really quick way to do that is by using a preset, choosing ground, choosing our elevation model. Bear with me while it thinks about it. There we go. So you can see we've got that much more detailed terrain coming through into our web, our web scene. Now, this is desktop, so I'm using ArcGIS Pro. So how do I actually get this high resolution elevation data into my web browser, so my web scene? We actually need to do that today by going into, back into ArcMap. Now, Rich is probably looking at my dem going, why didn't you use some of my cartography tools? Um, it's not about cartography. So what we need to do is we actually just need to share that as an image service. And we're going to share it as, let's just go through here. So we're going to share it as an elevation service. But what actually triggers my web scene to understand that it, it needs to interpret it as elevation is using a particular compression format. So it's the limited error raster compression type. And I need to go through and I need to choose using tiles from a cache and choose the ArcGIS online tiling scheme. And then go into advanced settings. So tile format will be lurk. And then once I publish that, um, portal for ArcGIS or ArcGIS online when it consumes that service is going to interact with that as elevation. And I'll show you that when we build that scene at the end. Today, you need to do this through a direct server connection. We can't do it from ArcGIS Pro. OK, so back in Pro. And let's just go to a different view. So just having a look at South Bank, which incidentally on Friday is where we will be having directions. Um, so we've got a surface model and we've got a terrain model. We've also got two-dimensional building footprints. So what we can do is using the next tool, which is or next task, sorry, um, we can calculate our building heights. And what it does for each of these 2D building footprints is extracts a base elevation from the elevation model, um, the height of the building from the surface model, and assigns those as attributes to our building footprints. And the next tip is that if you're familiar with City Engine and 
the CGA rules that you can write to NCD Engine, you can compile those as rule packages. But you can actually assign any of those rule packages to data using ArcGIS Pro. So if you are using City Engine, you can start to share around some of those rules so people who aren't using City Engine can actually still use them. So this is our LOD1 shell rule. I'll give him a better name. We'll just run that tool. So this one, I assure you, doesn't take very long. And while that's just processing, what it's actually doing is assigning that rule, but also writing out multi-patch features into my geodatabase. So my 3D objects are now a multi-patch which I can publish. So really nicely, you can see um, that cylindrical building, the Holiday Inn, has come up quite nicely through applying that to the engine rule. Now, another tip here when you are visualising a lot of buildings like this, it is quite handy to go into your appearance and turn off your back face culling. So this just makes it a little bit quicker because what it's only rendering what I can see from my viewpoint instead of you know rendering all sides of my multi-patch. And obviously if I wanted to set some transparencies at that point, that's something I could do as well. Now, I've got my multi-patches. I'm, you know, they are basic, but uh, that sort of uh, got them to that LOD one stage. So in order to share them with the web environment, um, the way that I do this, I don't know if it's the best way, it's the way that Alex does it, is to share it as a web layer. And with multi-patches, today with um, the particular publishing workflows that we have available to us, you do need to have a portal for ArcGIS connection, so it won't publish directly to ArcGIS online at this point in time. So you can see the layer type that it wants to publish is a scene layer, and obviously we'd need to add in some metadata and some tags so that we can search. And while I'm not actually going to publish this one for you, I want to point out that there are, to you and I, it'll look like there's kind of two processes happening. Um, the first is it's publishing what it calls my web layer, but then it continues to publish in the background a cache. And this cache is going to be published into ArcGIS Data Store, which Simon is going to explain a little bit more about what Data Store is in the next presentation. But that cache publishing process actually takes a little bit longer than the first process, so just be patient. Um, I've jumped the gun a number of times and uh, gone to try and use my service, and it hasn't been quite ready yet. So to see how that's tracking, you can go into the job queue and there'll be a progress bar which will be going back and forth. And like I said, just be patient on that 3D cache at this point in time. All right, so the other thing that we were going to do was actually add a little bit of greenery to our scene. And again, I'm going to do this using one of our preset options. So we can add some what I call comical conical trees. And we just do that, I've got some points. So we just add a point layer and then it's going to add these th thematic trees to give it a bit of, um, like I said, a little bit of greenery into our LOD1 scene. And that can just be published in the same way or the same process going through with those buildings as well. So creating our 3D data is complete. We've talked about how you publish it. Now how do we actually pull this together and make a scene that we can use in different apps? So portal, you create a new scene and then you can add layers in. Now as these were my layers, so my content, these come up um, you know, first, which is great. But obviously if you've got other 3D scenes or 3D layers, 3D enabled layers which are in your portal, um, you can search for them as you would with 2D information. And of course you can drape in 2D feature service as well over this surface. So I'm going to show you that elevation service first. Now, when I talked about that compression format or the, the lurk, um, it sounds a bit weird, isn't it, talking about the lurk? You don't see the elevation surface. So the way that we're interpreting it now in this web scene is it, like I said, it's interpreting it as elevation information. So when we zoom in, 
and you turn on and off that layer, you will see it's rendering based on that higher resolution elevation data. We can add some buildings in, add our trees. And then we could save some different slides which represent different viewpoints. And we can turn different layers on and off within those slides. So I'm just gonna capture one here. I should be able to spell. And let's add another, another scene, another slide, sorry. And the other thing that I mentioned earlier on is you can have a bit of a play around with the time of day in your scene, so casting, casting some simple shadows. Now, once we've saved our scene, I'm not doing well with the spelling. Oh, that's awful. Give it some tags. You can't get away without putting tags on any item in Portal or ArcGIS. Once we save it, we actually now get a URL which we can share around. So similar to your web map, you can send this link um, to other people that have access and they can open up this scene and sort of see it in the same way that you can. But the strength is we can now embed this scene into web apps, story maps, even to websites. So just quickly while I try and beat the clock for the last few minutes, um, to create a 3D, web map, uh, a 3D story map from Portal, the best way to do that is to go to create, create an app using a template. I like the story map journal for 3D. And if you're familiar with the story map, you know there's sort of uh, two, two aspects. You have your main stage and you've also got the panel where you enter information pretty much about that main stage. So today for 3D, we still need to enter it as a web page. And we enter in our, that web scene URL, which I just copied from the scene. Two tips here is that if you put the syntax and UI equals min, that's going to minimise the web scene user interface. So you've just kind of got the bits that you want to see within that story map. Um, another tip is using the hashtag and then a number. So I've, I've got a series of slides which I've saved within my web scene and I've put, so hashtag two, it's actually gonna open the scene on that second slide. So you can actually start to just use one web scene in a story map with many different slides and it actually makes it quite a bit faster so that when you're sort of navigating between different tabs in that story map. being very literal in my text component. All right, so you can see we do now have a 3D story map and we can navigate between those different slides within that view. So just to wrap up, I just wanted to go through some of the publishing workflows that I've been through and let you know where we are today with version 10.4 as to which product you need to use to publish those particular services. So for elevation and imagery, we still need to use ArcMap and for those elevation service or the, you know, the Lurk compression, uh, that's actually 10.3.1 onwards and you do need to have a direct server connection to create that service. Uh, for your points, lines, polygons, your feature services, um, if you've got ArcMap, you've got every option open to you. So ArcGIS for server, for a feature service, hosted feature service to ArcGIS online, and your portal hosted feature service. If you are using Pro, we've just got the ArcGIS online 
and portal options available to us. For our 3D objects, so to publish that scene service today, um, ArcGIS Pro with portal and data store as the hosting server, hosting database to your server. So Simon's going to go into that in a little bit more detail. However, give us, I would, oh, I'm going to say a month or two, so around the UC time in the US, um, when Pro 1.3 is released, we will be able to publish hosted scene services, so 3D objects direct from ArcGIS Pro to ArcGIS Online, if that's the platform configuration that you have. And the future state, obviously, uh, ArcGIS Pro with the ability to publish to either of your portals, depending on which one you want to publish to, and being able to access that in any of those apps as well. So to wrap up, uh, Enterprise 3D continues to be rolled out across the ArcGIS platform. Um, the key, I guess, improvements are the, the ability to publish those 3D objects as scene services and bring web scenes into your 3D web apps. So today it is the portal for, sorry, it's not the portal for ArcGIS Web App Builder. ArcGIS Online Web App Builder and the developer edition allow us to create 3D web apps. Portal will be in the next major release. We do have 3D support in the JavaScript API. Um, scene packages and hosted scene services are on the way, so uh, you will see them soon. And with that local government solution template that I downloaded, um, I guess that's kind of to, de to demonstrate that you don't need to have complex 3D data in order to start using 3D web scenes. Um, and that is it. Thank you very much for your time.